Good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. We've got to get this planter out of here today. But we're waiting on a hydraulic hose. That uh, I called the dealer and asked if they had it. They said, well, it's either going to show up at your uh, drop shed today or Thursday. So we're going to wait till that comes after lunch and uh, see if it shows up or not. If not, we're just going to pull the planter out. We'll bring it back in when we get our hose. If it does, we'll change that this afternoon and then get it out of there. So... Um, other than that, we don't have a lot to do to that planter, just to grease it. We'll work on that this afternoon. So that's basically done. I'm going to head down to the seed warehouse. We're going to spend the morning down there. Phil is moving grain. He's uh, filling the overhead bin right now. So that's... Standard practice for February and March, we just haul grain. We have had some remarkably nice weather over the last few days and going to continue to get some. Although, sounds like tonight, tomorrow, it's going to get sort of nasty as far as storms. I saw something that said potential two inch hail and tornadoes, which is most likely hyperbole and it's never going to be that bad. But hey, you might as well get people excited about it. Um, but then cold. See, that'd be Tuesday. Wednesday was supposed to be a cold day, and then right back up into the 50s and even 60s by the weekend. So um, it, it's starting to get a little spring itchy around here. It's almost March. It's still way early, but we're I'm feeling it. Later this week, uh, we're going to do some sorting down here and go through a bunch of these bags, start palletizing them by customer rather than by variety or however they came in. Um, also, uh, I have a couple of boxes... I have a couple of boxes of seed that was shipped in for me that's over here and one box of corn that's over there that was shipped in for me that we're transferring over to the um, guy that I'm warehousing for. All of our seed has to kind of be kept separate, but basically I had some extra, especially the box of corn, and I had a guy change his mind, cancel that one off and favor something different. Um, anytime I can get rid of a box of corn and I have to worry about returning it, it's a good thing. And since he needs one... And I got an extra one, we're just going to transfer it, which means I need to get it dug out of there, moved over here at some point. I've got two seed trucks coming tomorrow, which I think are bringing more of my beans for that pile. And um, I have another truck coming Thursday morning with, uh, I think, my corn. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting any warehouse stuff. It's all my stuff this week. Um... But I only have, there's only like 24 bags of corn coming on that truck, and then I think that's about all that I'm missing yet. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to reorganize some stuff. We'll get some stuff sorted around, but I'm going to try and finish up some insulation this morning. Probably not going to get it all done, but we're going to get close. We're going to get as close as we can. I did it. I finally did it. Finally. Finally. We have half of it done. <laughs> kind of. We, uh, we have this whole side done. I just put the last piece in right there now that said i do still have this cavity uh the top one and then the little bit in the peak but it's narrow and i have to cut the foam and i wanted to make sure i was going to have enough before i did any of that and we're not going to be up there putting steel up anytime soon so it's going to sit for a while and then the same thing on the very bottom one along the wall it's a narrower cavity and so uh i just kind of let it go if we just shove some um fiberglass in there and don't have the foam it will be okay but i got this side here done we have 17 pieces to put in on that side down there by the other side of that light and then all of the uh polystyrene the foam the white foam is basically done i'll use up whatever pieces i have left and then i've got a bunch of these cutoffs here where i'm making the splice and i don't need a full spot we'll use those along the wall that bottom one cut them whatever we got to do just to use the stuff up but feels good to have at least half of it done oh that's awesome so we are coming into a busy time of year in the seed warehouse here obviously um i run electric forklifts and i really like the electric forklifts for the most part but i'm not in an ideal situation for electric forklifts anyway we need to do a little battery maintenance so they have all these cells on here and we need to add some water so they make this handy little filler thing Automatically shuts off, put it in there to the stop. Squeeze the trigger, it fills it up. We just 
go from one to the other one, make sure there's enough water in the batteries on my forklifts. So, do, just finishing this one up, we'll go get the other one and do it and make sure we got one on the charger because I got two trucks coming tomorrow and, well, we need them to not be dead. This battery is a little better than the other battery. Uh, this is the older of the two forklifts, but the newer one to me. I just had this one a year. It's the one with a leaky cylinder, which I had somebody come out and look at that over the weekend, and they're ordering a seal kit and gonna fix it for me. So that is good. Um, I would like to swap the batteries, take the battery out of my other forklift that's much nicer and put it in this one and take this better one, put it in that forklift because, well, I would prefer to use that one more than this one. It is super nice having two because when one of them is dead, I can just jump on the other one. Um, also helpful sometimes when I've got a second guy down here and we're unloading trucks or treating or whatever to be able to use two forklifts and move stuff around a lot faster. Uh, that said, I don't really need two forklifts. I bought that one because it was advertised as having a good battery. And I know you never know if they're true or not, but the battery is better in that one. And a decent used battery costs about $2,000 less than I paid for that entire forklift. Plus that one has fork positioners. So there's a little bit of a splurge, but I thought that I would be able to do exactly what I'm saying and swap the batteries and make this one work a little bit better. Probably what's going to end up happening someday is I'll trade them both in and get an LP one. I don't really want to do that because I like the electric, but that's probably what's going to happen. All right, it is lunchtime. I'm going to go home and eat lunch, and then I think my wife and I might or might not have a Zoom meeting. I don't know. I, we were supposed to, and then I got an email that said it was canceled, but maybe she did. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. When I get back from that, we're going to hope that our hose is there. If our hose is there, we're going to change that. If it's not there, we're going to take the planter out anyway. Get the corn planter out. So that's the plan. Coming back from lunch, look what just pulled in. Our parts man. Probably my hose. One hundred dollar hose. Excellent. All right. Well. So the, the the trick here is that it is uh, it is this hose, and it goes through this tube, and it goes back here to the hydraulic motor on the other side of this vacuum. Um, we've got to get it pulled through that hose. So I think I'm going to try and couple them together and um, and use the, the old hose to pull the new one in. That's my best bet. Yeah, I'm gonna say I thought we'd get some oil out of there and then nothing came, but we're gonna let that drain out for a minute. I'm gonna crack the other end of it. Let's see if it'll suck the oil out of that line. All right, I found this fitting. It's just a, it's a swivel is what it is, but it's got the right threads. I don't know that it's the right type of fitting, but it's got the right threads and it'll couple them together. So, let it drain for a little while. Which way do I want to pull from? The front or the back? Probably from the front, I would think. I don't know. We're going to see what we can do here. Well, I got them coupled together. If I can get that splice in there, I'm not sure if I'll be able to pull this by myself or if I'm going to have to wait until we get some help. It's going, I guess. Well, I gotta be close, but it's stuck. But I can't get it to come any farther. Oh, almost. I almost got it. I had to pull the other hoses and wiggle them around a little bit. Must have got it unstuck and it went through. My fault. It's my fault because I didn't check it. It's my fault, but see this fitting? See that fitting? See it? See it? Can you see it? There's the other end of that hose. See that fitting? It's not the same. It's not the same. Why is it not the same? It's the same threads. It's the same size wrench. It's not the same fitting. This is a JIC. That one's a flat face with an O-ring on the end 
O-ring and whatever you call it. I put the hose in backwards. So now we get to pull it back out, flip it around, and do it again. Yay me. And I gotta pull the old one back through, otherwise I'll never get the new one back in. Uh. It was definitely easier the second time, or third time, or whichever way you wanna look at it. Both, second and third time. Um, I don't know why we can't have the same end on both ends of this hose. Same fitting on both ends of the hose. But it doesn't. Anyway, I got it fixed. So we're gonna hook this one up to where it goes and then pull all our slack through so we can get up to that fan over there. My goodness, look at that. It's like it's the perfect length. You can see that one's a flat faced with an O-ring seal instead of the JIC. I don't know why. I don't really care. Just, yeah, put it on there. All right, we'll get it tightened up, and then uh, we're going to get a grease gun out. Well, first we're going to clean up all the oil we spilled doing that. That hose just kept dripping the whole time. All right, so I got the grease gun out. I went through on the front side and got the um, wing or the wheel pivots and the folds, and uh, there's some drive shafts up there. We've got to come along the back side here and get every one of these gauge wheels, and they don't take a lot. Come on, I'm just gonna spill everywhere because I'm not holding it. Yeah, two hand job, but. Um, we're going to do this back rank, hit all of those, and we're going to fold the back ones up because there's some grease circs on the fold rock shaft, the pivot, and we can get to the front ones a little bit easier. Uh, there might be a couple up by the three point, the pivot in the front there that I've got to get, and that should be most of them, or all of them. Okay, we've got it all folded up. I'm going to get these uh, last few grease circs that we've got here. We're gonna go park this back out in the barn, but before we put it in the barn, we're gonna grab the corn planter and get that out. The other day, when we changed that one hydraulic hose, we um, blew some oil all over the planter and I forgot I was gonna clean that off, so let's power wash it off real quick. Ah! Now we can go park it out of the way somewhere while we get the corn planter out. Now all we need to go plant some beans is uh, some dry ground and some beans. We're going to need to treat some beans before that. Let's see, today's February 26th. It's still too early. In two weeks, I'd be real tempted if the ground was dry. I'd be real tempted. In the meantime, let's dig this beast out. Yeah, buddy. Hopefully our 8RX starts. Oh, look at that beautiful tractor. Yeah. Yeah, that is a sweet setup right there. So I am not gonna be able to get to that without moving the combine though, am I? Not gonna fit, not gonna work. All right, well, let's see what we can start. It's not cold, so it doesn't matter that they're not plugged in because they should start at 50 degrees without issue, especially since our battery disconnects were pulled. Let's see if this one fires up. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, uh, still got two new tractor smell even though it's two years old. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, no problem. No problem. All right. Let's go to get the combine started. Battery disconnects. Let's see what we get here. Beautiful. All right, I think we got to move the 8RX before this one. I just want to make sure they were both going to start. Oh, it's such a nice tractor. So smooth. Mm. This one does not smell like new combine. It, it smells like, like old combine, like that grain smell, soybean dust. It smells like soybean dust. All right, we got the combine out of the way. Let's see if we can hook onto this planter. It's possible the 9R is in the way, but I think we'll make it without having to move that. So we're going to try.
Got it. I'm gonna run that bucket over if I don't get out and move it. Just cleared that tractor. Yeah, that was tight. Tighter than I like, but we cleared there. Everything's good. Just we're not hitting the back wall with a row unit. I think we're okay. All right, we gotta hook up hydraulics and uh, uh, electrical connectors. Because we can't leave this hooked up in the shop. It's too big. We can't fully unfold it. it won't fit lengthwise. Um, but we can partially unfold it to make it a little easier to work on some stuff. So that's what we're going to do. I'm thinking about moving the sprayer out of the back of the shop. Um, whatever else is in the way so that I can just pull it straight in from the front. Unhook the uh, tractor and park it in the back. And uh, close the doors. But at least it'll still be right there in case we need to hook it back up quick to do something. Pause the planner in the shop activities. USDA survey guys here, National Ag Statistics Service. Go we'll talk. I don't know. All right, um, we had to set up. We got to set up an appointment or something. He needs a lot of information, stuff that I don't even have. Um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. But anyway, um, we're getting these hydraulic hoses and electrical stuff hooked up. Let me show you just a little bit of what we need. Okay, so um, we only need. Outlet number one right now, because we're just unfolding. We're not running any of the meters. We're not running the fertilizer pumps or anything like that. So we've got these super fancy color-coded hose grips that match the colors on our outlet covers. So one is green. So we're plugging that in. There it goes. Uh, we also probably don't need it, but I'm going to just because plug in our case drain. It says you're supposed to plug it in first, but the tractor's not even on. It doesn't matter. But we'll plug that one in. Um, that's just a low pressure and return for the vacuum motors and stuff, which again, we're not even plugging those in. So I don't think it really matters. The rest of these we don't need right now. What we do need though is our electric cable, um, both this one and the power harness because uh, the, the fold functions are controlled through the 4600 on this planter has easy fold. Okay, so we got those two plugged in and those two, that should be all we need, I think. We'll see here in a minute. I am going to move the sprayer. That semi truck's probably okay. We can probably work around that. But we're going to pull the sprayer out uh, a little bit because I want to pull that through as far as I can so that I can unfold those wings as much as possible between our posts into this bare space here to be able to work around it a little bit better. Um, and then we'll park the tractor back here so that if we need to do something with it, we can just open the center doors and back it through and it'll work. Okay, now we gotta get the combine put back inside. And then we gotta get the tractor and the bean planter put back in. All right, we got everything back in here. They're floor dirty again, but we got everything back in here. So, go ahead and close the door up. Shut the lights off. Okay, now let's get our corn planter unfolded where we want it, and that tractor where we want it, and figure out where we're gonna put that sprayer, probably. Probably in there where that, I just shut that door. Oh well. Okay, well we are in. Hmm, that's not gonna work. I'm not gonna be able to close my doors if I back up, if I drop it here. Okay, we gotta back up a little bit. Hmm. About there, all right, we're not gonna get this one folded very far. But that is okay. I gotta remember how how to do this. Activate custom. I wanna do that. Close this. Resume. Don't care. Don't care. Go away. Yeah, okay. Um we need our fold frame control right there. Yes. Okay. Transport. We're gonna go manual control, wing wheel lift. That's what we wanna do. Okay, so now I should be able to push this button down. There they go, nope. Now they go up. Well, they go down, yes. Okay, they're all the way down. Now we're gonna lower our three point hitch to take, put the weight on those wing wheels. There we go. 
Okay. We're going to come over here and hit wing fold. And do the same thing. Our SCV number one. I got it in neutral so the tractor can roll. Sweet. Just gonna go about right there. Okay. Now we're gonna drop our three point even more. Being cognizant of my hoses there. Alright, I gotta go out and unlatch it, unhook everything, and then we can pull the tractor forward. And we should be good. Probably could have stayed back a smidge further so it would be easier to walk through there, but whatever, we got it in here and unfolded as much as we can, or, well, I guess I could have gone a little more. That's all right. Well, then we can do what we need to do here. So we have to do the same things to this that we did to the bean planter. We got to go through the meters, clean everything up. If you look inside here, I already had this one kind of apart a little bit just so I could see. They're not horribly dirty, but they're dusty. These all need cleaned up. We got to inspect them. I did detention the brush belt, so everything should be... Um, you know, yeah, in decent shape. It just needs cleaned. It all needs cleaned. Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and pull all the meters and brush belts and clean everything up and inspect. And we gotta go through and look at all of our conceals, these pieces. Uh, if you'll remember when we got this last year, there was uh, half a dozen or so of these that were broken. We had to replace. Um, so we gotta check and make sure that they're all good. Everything looks fine, but you just got to go through and inspect it. So um, we need to address this. This is our in fertilizer, in furrow fertilizer nozzle that I wasn't real thrilled with last year. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do to fix that. Um, but tomorrow, and the reason we needed this in the shop today is because tomorrow my 360 yield center guy is coming. Do you know what we bought from 360 yield center? Yeah. A rain 360 rain and part of that um, part of that 360 rain is that it needs to know exactly where the planter went and uh, then it follows the planter passes is as it goes through the field GPS autonomously well they have to put their GPS receiver on this planter their planter kit or whatever and I said well I already have a deer GPS receiver up there and apparently that is not good enough so um, they're coming tomorrow, and we're going to get that done. That's what. That's why we got to have it in the shop. They could have done it out there, but it'll be a whole lot easier to work in here than out there. Suppose we ought to put the sprayer back inside too. Um, we need to get this in the shop. I was hoping to do it between the big planters, like now, uh, but then I had to get the corn planter in for tomorrow, so that didn't happen. So when we're done with the corn planter, we'll bring this in. It needs it needs cleaned up. Dad did power wash it off a little bit before uh, he put it away last fall um, but we could we could stand to do it again it needs an oil change and all the service work done and everything so usually it's the last thing to make it through the shop it's usually right before we're ready to start side dressing or top dressing wheat which I would say we're three to four weeks away from doing that so we got time okay well tomorrow we'll get started on this um, it's six o'clock, so I'm going home, but yeah, not a bad day. Got the planter in the shop. Weather's nice today. It's supposed to be really nasty tomorrow. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, two seed trucks. I've got the guys coming from 360 bringing some stuff, so that'll be exciting. Our first components from our 360 rain will be here. So thanks for watching this one. Have a great night, everybody. If you would uh, subscribe to the channel for me, would appreciate that. Hit the uh, like, subscribe buttons down below, and um, We'll see you guys in the morning. Brock's going to be here tomorrow, too. Keep everybody busy.